Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. It's Friday again, and we've made it to our first poetry recording. I'm so excited. Um, yes, it's poetry. That's the new topic that we are moving on to between now and the summer. Now, I really, really hope that nobody gave out a groan yesterday when you found out it was poetry. I know there is kind of the idea that some people think poetry is quite boring. I'm really, really hoping that between now and summer, I can convince you that that is not the case. That is wrong. If we were in school, those of you that I teach would know, I would just be bouncing off the walls of the classroom, throwing everything but the kitchen sink at you. And I would prove to you by sheer force of excitement and enthusiasm that poetry is awesome and is not boring at all. I'm slightly limited because I'm having to do this now via video link, but stay with me. Come with me on this journey, get involved in these videos, and hopefully I can convince you that poetry is fabulous, because it really, really is. And I'm going to start proving to you why. So what is poetry? Poetry is a literary work in which the expression of feelings and ideas is given intensity by the use of distinctive style and rhythm. It's also poems collectively or as a genre of literature. Let's just focus on this definition up into the semicolon. Let's get this, this second bit for a minute. Just look up to this semicolon. So a poem is anything written down, a literary work, something that is written down where feelings and ideas are expressed. So you're telling someone else, you're trying to explain to your reader a feeling you have, an idea you have, the thoughts that are in your head, but you do it in a way that is intense. You have a distinctive style, you have rhythm, and you do it in a way that really lets your reader know what the pictures are in your head and why they're important to you, and it makes you feel things on the inside. So what we're going to do between now and the summer, we're going to have a look and we're going to work out how do we use this style? What do we do with rhythm? How can we ourselves use these techniques to express our feelings and ideas in a really powerful, intense way. I'm hoping we're going to realise that it's not boring at all. It's really, really super cool. Um, so yesterday, um, when you did the work, you will have seen a table that looks a little something like this. And just to start off, to make sure that we're all on the same page, I want to run through the definitions and make sure we are getting them right. So a couplet, when two consecutive lines rhyme. Personification is when you give an object human characteristics. A metaphor, when you say something is something else. Rhyme, when two or more words have the same sound. So pale, whale, pale, grail, that ale sound is what makes all those words rhyme. And in a poem, the rhyming words are usually found at the end of a line. But not all poems have to rhyme. Some of them do not. Alliteration. Good luck for your spelling test today with this one. I can never remember how many L's and how many P's, so I'm hoping you do better than me. Alliteration is when more than one word begins with the same sound. A stanza is a technical term for a verse of poetry. So in the same way you get verses of songs um, in poetry, when you have something that looks like a verse, we call it a stanza which means process of elimination similarly goes all the way back up to the top. That's when you say something is like something else. It isn't something else. It's like something else. Cool. So we have a look at some of these techniques in action. OK. He clasps the crag with crooked hands. I'm going to give you a, a poem line by line. And I want you guys to try and guess who this poem is talking about. He clasps the crag with crooked hands. Any ideas so far? Close to the sun in lonely lands. Ringed with the azure world, he stands. The wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. He watches from his mountain walls, and like a thunderbolt, he falls. If you want to, pause the video, 
have a reread through that. Who is this poem describing? Any ideas? Okay, if I tell you this poem is called The Eagle by Alfred Tennyson. So this is a poem about an eagle. He clasps the crag with crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands, ringed with the azure world he stands. The wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. He watches from his mountain walls and like a thunderbolt he falls. What I love about this poem is I feel it makes the eagle feel really, really powerful. It makes the eagle feel really impressive. And eagles are super impressive birds. I don't know, but just to give you a sense, right? The wingspan of a golden eagle, so from tip of wing up to tip of wing, how far do you think the wingspan is of a golden eagle compared to the height of Kanye West? Which do you think is bigger? Do you think Kanye is taller than an eagle is long? So Kanye West is 1.7 metres tall. And a golden eagle from tip of wing to tip of wing. Longer, higher or lower? 2.3 metres, considerably longer. These are big birds, people. Big, big birds. And now we have a look at this bit here. Those feet that is what a golden eagle's feet look like. Those are the claws that we've got going on. This is a serious bird. I would not want to meet this bird on a dark night. I don't think I'd come off very well. So how does Tennyson use language to try and get across the power, the size and kind of the awesomeness of these birds? What I would like you to do, there's the poem again for you just for a second. It puts pictures inside our head. That's what Tennyson's trying to do with his words. He's trying to put pictures inside our head. So I've got old wrinkly hands. I've got a really, really blazing hot sun. We've got some waves on the sea. And we've got a strike of lightning. Have another look at the poem. How does Tennyson create these images inside our heads? You can pause the video again here, have a reread, have a think, then press play again in a second and we'll crack on with it. You back? Okay. This time, when you reread it, I want you please to find me an example of personification. I want you to find me an example of alliteration. And I want you to find me an example of a simile. So, pause, reread, personification, alliteration, simile, please. Let's see what you can find. I'm going to assume you've paused and you have come back. Personification. What could we have had? Okay. Does a crag, a crag is like the side of a mountain. Can that have hands? That's a very human thing. The sea. Can the sea be wrinkled? Does the sea get old and get all wrinkly? I'm not looking forward to going old and wrinkly. But can the sea do that or is that a human thing? That's quite a human thing as well. So, OK, we've got those things. What about oh lands, lonely lands? Can a land be lonely? Is that personification? Yes, it is. Alliteration. Where have we got those words with the same letter? He clasps the crag with crooked hands. Close. The sun. Good. What else? Lonely lands. We've got some alliteration there. Anything else? Not sure. And a simile. Saying something is like something else. Nice easy one. Like a thunderbolt he falls. If I come back to my pictures, the wrinkled sea, it's that wrinkled one there, linking with the sea, it's that personification that's put that kind of image of something old and crinkled into our heads. He hasn't just said the sea, the wavy sea, the wrinkled sea, and he's given us all of this extra stuff, like a lightning bolt 
he falls. This simile, it's giving that idea of the power, the energy. He's a bolt of lightning, this eagle. Lonely lands, the sun beating, that alliteration there, just kind of emphasizing it all. So we can see, guys, using these examples, this personification, alliteration, simile, just in six lines. It's such a short poem, but by packing it full of these techniques, we can create so many more pictures inside our heads. So what I want you to do now, grab um, a pen and paper if you've got one. I'll give you a second to pause. And I want you to just do three bubbles, personification, simile and alliteration. We've just had a little discussion about it on the video. But why do you think Tennyson has used these three techniques? What is the effect of these three techniques in this poem? Pause the video now. Jot down a few notes for me. You good? You back? Press play again. You have to press play. If you pause me, you then have to press play again. I'm sorry. That's how it works. OK, let's have a little look at your notes and see what you had. So effect of personification. I'm hoping you guys had something along the lines of it makes animals and things feel closer to human beings. It lets us connect with animals and things. It makes the poem feel more alive and it lets the reader understand what the poet is talking about more clearly. If we're linking things in with human emotions that we understand, we start to have that link to be able to understand what's being said a bit more. What did you have for effect of alliteration? Hopefully, alliteration makes words sound more impressive. He clasps the crag in crooked hands. You can really kind of get energy into that. It's going to emphasize certain points of a text. What are the lands? They're lonely lands. Makes it feel even more important, makes it stick out. And it has something sound very harsh, clasps, crack, crooked. Or it can make things sound more musical. Lonely, lands, la, 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 la. Yeah? You might have other things as well, but these are the main things. So that alliteration, if you say it out loud, it's going to affect the way you hear it. It's going to affect the way it hits your ears and makes you feel in that way. Last but not least, what is the effect of a simile? I went with, they compare things to each other, so they give more detail about what a thing is like. But sometimes similes compare something very unusual to something more common. So I certainly have never seen an eagle diving down to get prey. I've never actually seen that happen. But I have seen a bolt of lightning from the sky. So if you tell me that this eagle flying down from the air, jumping down off his perch and swooping down is like a bolt of lightning. I'm like, oh, OK, I know what a bolt of lightning is. OK, I can I can see how this works. I can get what that must look like. That comparison helps the reader understand more, puts that emphasis on. Finally, little question that I just want to leave you with. The whole way through, Tennyson has said, he clasps the crag. Close to the azure world, he stands. Is it significant that the eagle in this poem is male? And Tennyson makes it really, really clear that he's a boy eagle. He's a bloke. Is that just coincidence? Is it just because Tennyson had to say something? Or is there maybe something deeper going on? What might Tennyson be suggesting? This one is entirely your opinion, ladies and gents. It's just an interesting thing to think about. And that's the best thing for me about poetry. Every person that reads a poem is going to have a different response to it one way or the other. So my opinion on this might be a little bit different from yours. And that's completely fine. You guys have a think. You guys decide what you think is going on. Um, please remember, you have a spelling test on today. And there's also going to be a challenge video today. And for that challenge video, we're going to have um, a little look a little bit deeper into the eagle. And we're going to have a go at writing our own versions. So everybody is welcome to come over to the challenge video and join me for that. But it's not compulsory. Have a wonderful rest of your day, my lovelies. 
have a good weekend because it is a Friday. I hope there's sun out for you. Keep safe and I will see you as soon as we possibly can. Bye bye.